so hi, I'm Soleil. For those who don't know me, I'm the Senior Coordinator of Membership Engagement at BC Soccer. Uh, thanks for coming to the final of four membership engagement webinars. Um, all of them will be posted to our YouTube channel and we will share the slide deck from this webinar out after the presentation. I'm looking forward to learning more about the BC Soccer Insurance during this webinar. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Cameron Chung, General Manager of SBC Insurance. All right, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the quick intro. Um, I know everyone's taking some time out of their day for this presentation, but I'll go right into it. So Soleil, I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully that's OK. Any issues, just let us know. OK, it this looks is good the... on my... Perfect. All right, good. Just let us know in the chat. Um, just a couple quick housekeeping things is that um, if you have questions, maybe if you could just please write them down and wait till the end of the presentation. Um, we're going to try to get through uh, the presentation as quickly as possible. This way allows maximum time for um, the question period. Uh, and also the slide decks will be distributed, uh, I believe, from Soleil uh, or if you want them and also a YouTube link to the presentation as well. OK, so just to kind of go over this, who we are, um, we are SBC Insurance. Um, we're actually a company of uh, Sport BC. Um, not a lot of people know that, but we were established by Sport BC to address um, the insurance in, uh, in industry, essentially, or insurance for sport. Um, back in 1979. Um, so um, one of the things I want to clear up is we're not all sport. Um, that all sport name is actually an insurance company. Um, so um, all sport was absorbed into another insurance company. Um, so we are not an insurance company. We're actually an insurance brokerage. And because we're owned by Sport BC, it effectively makes us the only insurance brokerage in Canada that's owned by a non-for-profit society. So our mandates are different uh, and all our profits from commissions from insurance, um, whether it's from Soccer BC or any other PSO or insurance policy, it does go back into Sport BC and Amateur Sport. Other companies uh, or organizations that you may have heard of or know about are Kids Sport, BC Amateur Sport Fund and then the rebrand of BC Women in Sport are all companies or entities owned by Sport BC. So we are we are a service. Um, we are a legal entity too, but we are a service of Sport BC. Um, and so our mandate is to essentially uh, focus on helping members of Sport BC. And also we have expanded to help other um, provinces as well. Okay, so that's who we are. SBC Insurance. We are an insurance brokerage. Okay. This is our agenda for today, uh, and um, really brief on the big topics that a lot of members through BC Soccer have is on um, the commercial general liability, the errors and emissions liability. I like to call it DNO light. Uh, abuse liability and participant accident, or another name for it would be sport accident, and then we'll go into the question period. So, commercial general liability. What is it? <laughs> it pays compensatory damages for which you are legally liable. And essentially, commercial general liability protects members and member clubs uh, for claims arising from bodily injury and property damage in the event that an individual files a lawsuit or a third party files a negligent, negligence claim against BC Soccer Association. So what a lot of people don't understand is that CGL insurance is intended to provide defense and settlement costs okay, um, for you as a member of BC Soccer. And one of the coverages that it provides is participant to participant liability or player pl player versus player insurance, uh, which protects a participant in the event that one player is sued by another player resulting from an injury. So maybe it's that slide tackle from a member that from a from in, in a soccer game uh, where that person suffers a broken leg and maybe it was malicious. Uh, and so they decide to sue each other. 
uh, for this. Now, one thing I want to clear up is that commercial general liability insurance is not money or funds to provide you to sue someone else. It's an instead, it's more so insurance to protect you or defend you against bodily injury and or property damage claims against you. So it's it is defense for you. It's not to provide you to sue someone else. That's a big misconception that I want to clear up about what commercial general liability is. OK, so why do we need it? Well, because accidents can happen and you can be sued. OK, and we do live in a litigious society uh, now currently really similar to the US. And from what I've learned from a lot of webinars I've taken is that, yes, we are very litigious or getting towards uh, mirroring what they do in the US, but some people may sue out of necessity, medical bills, etc. Uh, and then just to reiterate that point that the CGL or the Commercial General Liability Insurance will pay defense costs and any monetary reward uh, that's compensatory in nature uh, to the plaintiff if they win the lawsuit. So you'll notice defense cost and any sort of monetary award is very key to that, right? What do you have? So as a member of BC Soccer and the Insurance Program, you will have a limit of five million per incident. There is no aggregate, uh, and there is a one thousand dollar deductible on bodily injury and property damage claims. Uh, in addition to this, that's included into the product. Okay is the 5 million errors in emissions or the DNO light that I previously mentioned. Um, so that is also has a $1,000 deductible. Okay. One important thing to mention about this is DNO light. It does not replace a separate directors and officers policy. Again, since I started SBC insurance probably in 2016, so eight years ago, um, I remember the first month um, just explaining to lots of organizations, nonprofits, societies, charities that um, DNO light does not replace the need for a separate DNO insurance policy. Okay. So, CGL, what activities am I covered for? So, sanction or authorized activities via BC Soccer. Uh, basically, activities are soccer activities that are usual to the sport of soccer. So when we say that it's usual to the sport of soccer, skydiving or bungee jumping as a team building activity are not usual to the sport of soccer and therefore are not covered. Okay. So competitions within Canada are covered um, as long and so this includes the liability and the participant accident and participant accident we will get to at, uh, you know at a later point in this presentation uh, includes dry land training practices tournaments and league play and competition. So what activities am I covered for continued? So social activities are covered as well. So award banquets, liquor liability is included. However, any other events not including annual awards, um, they do need to be referred to our brokerage. Um, so for example, events with beer gardens. I would say this is probably one of the most common questions we get. Is the beer garden covered? Um, liability extended into it is not covered without underwriting approval. So in Lay's terms, we do need to refer it to the insurance company for an extension uh, to the beer garden. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of, oh, I'll just go back to that side. There's a lot of um, Q&A that we need to go through and then you will be provided a quote. So if you need coverage for a beer garden, um, you know, generate revenue for your local club, um, it's not automatically covered. And just so it doesn't sound like I'm picking on the BC soccer membership, the same goes with any other provincial sport organization we deal with or any other event and through any other policy, beer gardens need to be referred to an insurance company for review before coverage can be provided. So we can provide separate special event policies uh, through our brokerage um, that have this exposure uh, for beer gardens um, and anything to do with liquor sales. So you can contact us directly for this, um, or you can contact BC Soccer or uh, BC, uh, SBC Insurance or BC Soccer. Um, so yeah, that, that's something, an option for you guys. And where am I insured? Um, so you're insured in Canada. 
uh, the U.S., but also U.S., this is also another misconception as well, is that it's only for occasional U.S. Um, part, you know, basic activities. Um, so you also have to send this request to, to SBC Insurance because we do have to refer it. Um, now, where the confusion lies is that it is a worldwide wording. So most commercial general liability policies do extend worldwide. But what a lot of people fail to, I guess, understand is that it is contingent on approval from the insurance company. And not only that, let's say, for example, there is, um, I got some requests for tournaments or competition in Denmark or Sweden uh, or somewhere in Europe. And you do need to send that for approval if you want the commercial general liability to extend to that. So if it's sanctioned, you want insurance, you have to send it in for approval. Um, now, when that approval is granted or if it is granted, the lawsuit needs to be brought within North America. So this means if something happens in, let's say, Denmark or Sweden or somewhere in Europe, and you're being sued or your club is being sued, managers, coaches, et cetera, that lawsuit does need to be brought forth in a court of law in North America, okay? So um, this CGL insurance does ensure most of the majority of your games, tournaments and practice are covered within Canada. If you're unsure, you can contact us for a referral to the insurance company. Who is an insured? So pretty long list there. Um, members, directors, executives, employees, managers, coaches, officials, referees, volunteers, and trainers. Um, so the last point there, all these people are insured under the policy. However, we want to just go into a little bit detail about trainers. It does exclude professional liability uh, and also excludes anyone with a, a professional background. Um, where they should be insured through, like, so let's say, their own association or their own governing body. So lawyers, doctors, uh, even insurance brokers are not covered just because uh, they're they're you know they have insurance elsewhere. Trainers and other professions where you should have your own insurance are not covered. Okay. So this is just a, a long list of also what's not covered. Um, beer gardens that we went over, travel medical insurance. Um, and I put this key point here about out of province medical insurance. Uh, and something to kind of look up is that travel medical insurance uh, is necessary if you leave the province of BC. Because your BC MSP does not extend beyond British Columbia. And so what this basically means is that not a lot of people know but your BCMSP does not extend to Alberta, Ontario. There might be some sort of reciprocal agreement, but that reciprocal agreement between the provinces only pays out maybe about 10%. Um, so when I say most really blanketly, because not everyone has this, but if you do have an extended health plan, you probably would have medical insurance anyways within Canada or to the US. Um, so if you get injured in Ontario or you need to go to the hospital in Ontario, Alberta, um, something that you can always buy through BCAA. Uh, you can contact SBC Insurance if you like to. Um, you know, you can do that on your own accord if you want to get travel medical insurance or again, um, go through um, your um, extended benefits uh, policy. So infectious diseases aren't covered, criminal acts, drinking and driving. Uh, independent contractors are also not covered. So we just went over that briefly. So if you have your own business or limited company, you probably want to get your own insurance. Uh, professionals, like I said, uh, doctors, lawyers, physiotherapists, and also no coverage for anyone that's covered by any workman's compensation law policy. So it's not, it's not going to replace that. Uh, tangible property insurance. Um, so basically stuff you can touch with your soccer balls, soccer nets, jerseys, those are not covered under this policy and any sort of cyber risks or liability are not covered. Now I'll probably go into the more controversial topic here. Uh, the er errors in emissions insurance, also like to call DNO light, 
Why I call it light is because it's not a full comprehensive policy. And this is an extension of the CGL insurance. OK, it's not a separate policy here under the BC soccer insurance program. It's an extension of the liability insurance. And actually, there is no cost to this coverage. It's just a part of the product or built into the product. So if you call BC soccer and say, hey, I want to remove this errors and emissions DNO light, you can't. And even if you want to, you're not going to get any sort of refund. Um, so this applies again to most provincial sport organization insurance policies or sport liability policies that you get DNO light. They might call it errors and emissions. They might call it professional liability. They might call it directors and officers insurance with wrongful acts coverage. But in the wording, it basically it's a paragraph long or two paragraphs long um, showing that you're only covered for compensatory damages. And so this is where we're going to go into what is it? Yes, it's very robust here in the points that I put, but essentially errors and emission insurance is basically more so coverage for your organization, for your directors and officers while you're making decisions because you have a fiduciary duty uh, while you sit on a board as a volunteer and you can be personally liable while on that board of directors. So this is why this coverage is quite important. But one thing to kind of drive home too is that it is not a fully comprehensive DNO insurance policy. Okay, that's why we call it DNO light. Um, and again, if some some companies call it professional liability, uh, and also um, some call it uh, what is it, directors and officers wrongful acts. Um, so there's that. And so when you make decisions, again, you can be personally liable for those decisions you make on behalf of your organization. And so insurance in this case for the DNO light, it's intended to cover financial losses. Uh, essentially of owners, directors, and officers, and the legal expenses to defend the board uh, in case there is an alleged error or omission in their duties for compensatory damages. Um, so you may be sued while you're performing your duty as a director of that of your local soccer club. And as a result, what, what are you covered for? So we'll get into what you're covered for for this coverage, and it's essentially only for compensatory damages. Again, this is maybe really confusing, but the DNO light, it can't be an all encompassing coverage. It only provides compensatory damages coverage because of a wrongful act if you are board, if you're a board member or you're a director. Um, so this means if there is money being awarded um, to the plaintiff, to the person that's suing your board to compensate for dam damages, injury, or an incurred loss, then the insurance policy will be triggered. Okay. Now, it does say Markel benefit. This is just a typo, but it does provide a drop down event, a drop down, um, a drop down coverage to all your clubs. So all the clubs through BC Soccer that have been approved or are, are members in good standing, you do get this DNO light coverage. Um, so again, there's no cost to you. If you have a board, you, you know, you get this coverage. And again, it's only for compensatory damages. So what's the limit you have? It is two million for compensatory damages only. OK. What are the advantages of the DNO light? So again, it doesn't cost anything. It provides a drop down to the clubs uh, if you have a board and there's no additional costs. It's more so this DNO light is geared towards smaller clubs uh, who can really benefit from this because maybe they don't have the budget or you don't have the budget um, to buy a separate DNO policy. OK, uh, and again, it doesn't cost any premium. But we also put in here, it doesn't have to be through SBC insurance, it can be through any broker you want. Uh, you want to or you should consider buying a separate DNO policy. It's highly recommended. So the disadvantages. Um, so it only again provides compensatory damages, and we try to drive that point home. And it's not comprehensive enough to cover your board's exposures. Um, so what about punitive and exemplary damages? They're not covered. 
Uh, so punitive damages are damages awarded by the court to punish your organization if you're found at fault. Okay. It also doesn't cover, let's say, wrongful termination lawsuits. So if any of your clubs, sorry, if any of your clubs have employees, then those wrongful termination lawsuits uh, can be exposures for your organizations. Uh, so an employee suing your board for, again, a wrongful dismissal or termination. Uh, other examples of claims that I have experienced, not personally, but have seen come across my desk are reinstatements of membership, uh, harassment, uh, or claims or cases decided by the Human Rights Tribunal. Uh, so what if the lawsuit is not for compensatory damages? So that's another disadvantage in a sense, in essence, is that what if your club or your board is not sued for money? Um, so again, it relates back to that reinstatement of membership or something that's been submitted to the Human Rights Tribunal. Um, there is no compensatory damages being sought after from the plaintiff. Um, so what about what, what happens then? Um, so yeah, there is no coverage there, um, but that's what a separate DNO policy should uh, cover as long as you buy the right one. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are the disadvantages. And the one example that I've used probably since 2017, 2018 is the Vernon Pickleball Club example. It is public information. You could probably find it on Google somewhere uh, through Global News, but I'll just go through the example quickly here and not to bore you. Um, so essentially, the Vernon Pickleball Club uh, is uh, a club in Vernon, BC, Northern BC. And basically what happened was they had this member who is basically irate uh, providing um, unsolicited coaching and uh, basically advice to members while playing pickleball. Yes, I know it sounds ridiculous, pickleball. Um, but it got to the extreme where this individual started bringing their pet or dog to pickleball courts uh, and essentially membership or the general membership was just being they're really frustrated with this individual uh, and so it got to the point and to the extreme where uh, the board of Vernon Pickleball Club uh, decided um, to basically remove this individual's membership um, so that's how serious it got now because this person was no longer val uh, eligible to be a member of Vernon Pickleball Club or participate and be a member, this individual didn't like that. So what did they do? They asked for a reinstatement of membership. There was actually no compensatory damages being sought after from this individual. And so they decided to sue Vernon Pickleball Club uh, for reinstatement. And, and actually it did go to court. It actually, there was a court date set and it finally went to court. Um, but what ended up happening is Vernon Pickleball Club had a DNO insurance policy, a separate DNO insurance policy. And what did it do? It provided the legal and defense costs for Vernon Pickleball's board to defend against this claim. Uh, and so I believe at the end of the day, it was about $45,000 in uh, legal expense costs that Vernon Pickleball Club incurred. And so what ended up happening is when it went to court, the judge decided that and voted in favor or decided in favor of Vernon Pickleball Club that they were in their right, you know, to um, remove this individual's membership and basically told this individual and told him, you're just wasting the court's time. And so he instructed this individual to pay back all the court costs. Now, yes, that was probably the result that Vernon Pickleball Club wanted and probably the best for everyone involved. But what the key point here is that DNO insurance is good to provide those defense costs because Vernon Pickleball Club didn't have $40,000, $50,000 uh, of, let's say, surplus to defend against that DNO claim. And so that's why it's very important uh, that they carried it. And so this is why I use this example or have used this example for all these years because it is a true, you know, real life example that your local soccer club can relate to. OK, so can you buy coverage? Yes, you can. Uh, you can buy it through our office. You can buy it through any brokerage you want. Just make sure you consult with the broker on your needs and your exposures. Uh, and so, yes, you can buy it on a standalone basis. And again, it doesn't have to be through us. You can apply through us directly. Uh, premiums start at 750. 
Um, so it, it's up to you. Again, we're not here to sell you anything. It's more so as an option. Give you um, a member of BC Soccer an option. The next topic or extension of the CGL is the abuse liability. Okay, this is probably one of the most evolving, I would say, coverages and um, more sensitive coverages uh, that um, you know that we address in presentations. Uh, just because when I first started, it wasn't, I would say, as um, you know it's not one of those coverages that was really focused on. And that is kind of unfortunate because of just everything that has occurred in the world of sport, uh, whether that's in Canada or globally, uh, uh, especially in the US. Uh, and I won't name specific sport disciplines or organizations in this presentation, um, but yeah, just how this coverage has evolved uh, and how this coverage is being sought after is not just for BC Soccer and their membership, but it's it should be and uh, has been for every organization that wants this coverage or to maintain this coverage. Okay. Definitions vary amongst insurance companies, but for the purposes of this presentation, the insurance company that BC Soccer is insured through, uh, it's any act or threat involving corporal punishment harassment, molestation, or any form of mental, physical, or sexual abuse. So what's covered? Again, it does only pay compensatory damages because of an actual or alleged abuse. Um, it also pays compensatory damages as a result of a bodily injury arising out of abuse. The limit per act incident is 2 million, and there is an aggregate. OK, an aggregate means the total amount in a policy period. So two million per policy period, and it does reduce as. Limits get withdrawn from that per policy period. So there's also a deductible of 5000 per claim. And it does provide de defense expenses to defend against an action seeking compensatory damages. So again, just to recap, compensatory damages are damages where you are seeking a monetary amount for your suffering, okay? So that monetary amount is what compensatory damages is about. Okay, so what's changing? And this is a very generic kind of statement, but it is changing and hardening due to the global abuse events and accusations that have occurred. Um, I've been told terms like social inflation, uh, meaning basically things that are occurring in the world has basically forced insurance companies to react. Uh, and that right now, only currently, only a few markets do offer abuse coverage. I wouldn't say is as readily available as it was, let's say, eight to 10 years ago or even 20 years ago, where insurance companies weren't focused on the concerns or exposures surrounding abuse. Now, the markets that do offer abuse, they most likely only offer a maximum of a million per incident and an aggregate. So depending on the insurance companies, they do offer abuse coverage, um, which it would be an extension of the liability insurance. Um, but depending, and this is just general statements, not every market is the same, um, but a million would probably be the maximum that most insurance companies offer. 2 million is very unheard of. There's only a few that offer it. Um, there might be some creative ways to get to 2 million, but generally speaking, um, normally it's a million. Most, some organizations I deal with only have 250,000 or a half million. So it just depends on the situa situation. And every year it's going to change. So if we see more abuse claims in the industry uh, and globally as a whole, um, then you know, these limits can definitely change as we as we go forward. OK, and again, not every organization has abuse liability as well. Now, the, the final coverage that we're going to talk about is a participant accident. I would say this probably is the one that. 
a lot of BC soccer members relate to and, and have questions about or are confused about. Also, I would say this is probably where, uh, again, a majority of our inquiries come from is a participant accident. Um, other names or old names that are, are used are sport accident. Um, so, but we call it PA just as a short or abbreviation to the coverage. Um, and what it is is that if you suffer an injury or death um, while playing in a soccer or sanctioned soccer activity, for example, a broken arm during a game, you have coverage. Um, but that this coverage only applies to these accidents that occur in Canada. It doesn't extend outside of Canada. And just to communicate, this is not a travel or emergency travel medical insurance policy. Okay. And this should, and but you can purchase travel medical insurance for out of province when you do. So just keep that in mind. But this coverage is also a no, it's based off of no fault. So that it doesn't look to find someone at fault. The difference between participant accident and commercial general liability is commercial general liability looks to hold someone responsible for actions or for negligence. And because of those actions or negligence, someone has or suffers from a bottle injury and or property damage. And so that's what the difference or huge difference is, is that CGL insurance is based on uh, holding someone responsible and the defense and settlement costs for liability, whereas participant accident or sport accident or PA, it's based off of no fault. So they're not going to look to find anyone at fault. Okay. And then this, these last points are very crucial, I would say. And again, maybe it's just a communication thing, but you know, for the importance of this webinar and communicating to membership is that this coverage participant accident is in excess of provincial health plan. So in excess of BCMSP and in excess of any sort of employee benefit program that you might be a part of, okay? We call it third payer uh, because it's not meant to be primary and it's not meant to replace any sort of extended employee benefits program. So it is, um, you know, the wording is tertiary. Um, so it is third payer and volunteers are not covered. So non-members such as event volunteers, um, but coaches who are members are covered. Okay. So the member, BC soccer member is covered. Okay. Again, misinterpretations. Um, again, it's most probably misunderstood coverage among sports organizations across Canada that I deal with. Again, it's it's tertiary. Uh, and then there is a formal insurance claims process. So you do have to go through it. Um, so there's no portal that you can submit your, your claim under. Um, so each claim, you also have to fill out a claims form, which was reviewed and approved by the PSO or by BC Soccer before it's submitted to the insurance company. So you can't just, you don't have the discretion to submit it. It does need to be approved. And then, so once your once your claim has been approved, then it's submitted um, to the insurance company. And basically what happens is an adjuster is assigned to your claim to investigate and determine if coverage applies. Okay. Again, this is not an extended health benefits insurance policy. So it's not, again, like a manual life or Canada life benefits policy. Again, there's no portal to submit your claim and it's not intended to replace an extended benefits policy. Limits. So these are just limits. They could change every year. It's not an exhaustive list uh, and there's no deductible at this current time for claims. Okay. Uh, and again, it's subject to change. So the principal amount that you are insured for is up to 50,000. And for any one accident, the maximum amount or aggregate is a million. Um, so these are some of the coverages that, or benefits that you would have through this participant accident coverage are like fracture indemnity up to a thousand, dental accident up to 10,000, um, you know, for, uh, replacement of dentures, uh, hearing aids, eyeglasses up to 200, emergency transportation up to $50, uh, and then um, uh, a general medical expense reimbursement up to $15,000. Uh, 
On this last one here, medical expense reimbursement, we're going to actually go into more detail about this one. Um, so this one is probably the most used coverage as well. Um, so it's up to 15,000 per incident, but it does include coverage for a licensed uh, physiotherapist, a chiropractor, osteopath, or registered nurse service. And also a new one also too is athletic therapy as well would apply or massage therapy as well. Um, licensed ambulance services, crutches, uh, rental of a wheelchair, um, prescription drugs that are not covered by any federal, provincial, government, or private health care plan. So if you don't have coverage for prescription drugs, um, you probably could make a claim through that. Uh, and then also other hospital services that might not be covered by um, federal, provincial, or government health care. So on the left of this presentation here is a, uh, just a big snippet or a snippet of the actual claims form. It is fillable. Um, you, you, you have to report the claim within 30 or the incident within 30 days of when the incident occurred. You can download and fill out the claims form in full, okay, on the website. Uh, it must be signed and completed by a club manager. Uh, or executive, and then you got to send it to this email address, claims at SBC Insurance. We will then send it to BC Soccer for a review and approval. And then once it's approved, we can send it off to um, the claims department at the insurance company. Okay. And the adjuster that represents the insurance company will be in contact with you within one to 10 business days. So that concludes the the over uh, the overview of the insurance program through BC Soccer, um, forty minutes there about maybe thirty five, um, but I do want to keep it open uh, for questions uh, if anyone has any. So Tyler, Hi there. there's one in the chat here too. I'll oh, let sure. this person go first and then I'll read sure. the one from the chat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sorry, I was on another call and, and was late to the meeting. Is there any way I can get the um, the uh, PowerPoint emailed? Yeah, yeah, we're actually after this presentation, um, it will be distributed. I think maybe Soleil can confirm that. Um, so you can get the slide deck, not an issue at all. And I, I do believe there's going to be a YouTube link as well, right? I think, yeah. Yes, I'll send a YouTube link out uh, once that's ready. It'll take a little bit of time just to edit out um, some parts and the slide deck will go out probably later this afternoon. Perfect. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Problem. So first I'll go. Um, I see that Sam wrote one in the chat and then Jeremy has their hand up and then Sarah wrote one. So Sam said, Many clubs send teams to U.S. tournaments. It's easy to imagine a scenario where a player v. player incident results in the Canadian club being named in a lawsuit filed in the U.S. Does SBC need to approve each and every team that travels to the U.S. before they and their club would be covered by the CGL policy? That seems onerous and contrary to the purpose of having worldwide coverage. Yeah, it's a very good question, um, but we have to also um, realize that this insurance, um, you know, let, let's kind of, I'll provide some context as well. Uh, and that is insurance policies that are sold in Canada to a specific organization. The intention is to protect, protect that organization in that specific province. And it has evolved over time to protect that provincial sport organization across Canada. Um, the whole thing about referring trips to the US or tournaments where the liability in, in you know wants to be extended to a tournament in the US. Yes, I understand it's a very onerous and we go through this with a lot of provincial sport organizations, but it is necessary because the exposures in the US are different. It doesn't matter if you're going to Washington State in an hour and a half drive or hour drive or you're going to New York. Um, the exposures in each state are different and the insurance requirements are different. Now, this is because it's a group policy. Um, you do need to follow that practice. But what I have found is sometimes if you do attend a tournament, the tournament may offer insurance as well to extend to your team. And that sometimes can be more cost effective 
and let's say less onerous, especially if your activities are unsanctioned as well, um, because that's a big component of this, because this insurance policy is meant to protect the BC soccer membership within BC and across Canada, but the focus is within BC, right? It's for BC soccer, right? Okay, next question. Oh, we'll go to Jeremy if you want to unmute yourself and. Hi, thank you for uh, the informative presentation. Um, I'm a little horrified to find out that I don't have directors and officers full <laughs> liability, but I'll deal with that separately. My question is about coaches. Um, specifically, and I, I know you can't answer a specific instance, so I'm just going to give an example, but I, I had a coach, coach recently reach out to me and advise that they had been injured in the course of running a practice. Okay. Um, so the, I guess the first thing, and I think I know the answer to this, is uh, it's it's tertiary uh, health expenses. It's not salary replacement or anything like that in terms of correct. coverage. Yes, okay. correct. So there's never been, and that's another thing too that we get a lot of inquiries about is that, oh, you know, I've been, and we got this with another sport discipline about a couple months ago, is that, and this person was obviously, a, you know, a professional and had, you know, a pretty decent wage and they wanted their lost wages covered. Um, so yeah, it's not a benefit of that. And again, it's tertiary. So lost wages are not covered by by these policies. Okay, so then just to, and I'll complete, or I'll finish with this. Um, in, in this case, we're talking about an assistant coach who happens to be, uh, I think is in our system, I'm not sure. So mm. they're a member of the club by virtue of being a parent. Uh, mm -hmm. They were injured but not in the course of play per se, but in the course of a practice. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm not asking you to rule on this case. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I'm reading between the lines here is that that's probably not something that's covered, that that's basically. Yeah, wrong. you can, you can still submit it. Like uh, we're not trying to discourage claims. We're just, it's more so about providing enough education for you to make a decision or what direction to go in, because that's also another thing the purpose of this insurance presentation as well is to give you enough information to make that decision on your own. Um, so for that coach, they can still submit it, um, but there's just no guarantees of what's going to be covered or not covered because that's not for actually our brokers to determine. It's for the insurance company representative. So um, and this also brings up a point about registration and making sure whether it's your club or other clubs on this call about making sure that, you know, let's say um, these individuals are registered as a member or following those protocols of getting registered into the system. I understand that every organization has a different registration system, or maybe it's been unified now. It depends on the organization. Um, but this also probably raises bigger questions about making sure people are actually registered as well. So do you come back to the affiliated club to check that? Because, of course, BC Soccer doesn't have a list of all of our coaches. Uh, or parents. So yeah, the, ver question. the verification process, that's more like an internal kind of thing. So if the adjuster wants to go into that detail, they have the right to audit it as well. Again, we're not trying to find fault in the process or like, you know, let's say, you know, we're not going to cover, cover you kind of situ situation, but they do have a right because they are sending out funds to investigate. And so that's a big component of that is that hey are, is this person actually a member because if we if the insurance company didn't follow that practice then it would be, you know the sky's the limit on paying claims right so right thank you very much no problem going to jump to steven just because he may have something to add with your response here and then we'll go to sarah's question after sure. yeah hi you should be clubs should be registering their coaches and team officials with their districts that's part of the registration process mm -hmm. so all of that information is provided to us through the districts and we upload that into our registration into the soccer reg registration system and then when the claims come in we do check to see if players are registered and we also do try to check to make sure that coaches are registered and we do go back to the clubs or the districts if we don't find them in the system to make sure they're registered. Good point. Thanks, Stephen. 
All right, so we'll go with Sarah's first question, and then there's a couple more comments on the U.S. insurance here. Um, but yep. the first question is, do you have a separate cyber insurance that you can purchase along with a DNO policy? Yeah, so um, cyber and DNO can. Um, so cyber is a little bit different. Uh, there are some markets that offer it on a standalone basis. So yes, you can apply. Uh, our brokerage does offer it. It just based off a of qualification. Um, so an application, basically. Same thing with a DNO insurance, but they're usually not purchased together. Like you, they're all they're separate products. So it's not like a package policy per se. Um, but you can apply for cyber separately and DNO separately. Okay. And then also about the US question here. Um, isn't that why we have to pay and apply for travel applications? Isn't that where we surprised on our behalf? So the travel application is more so, from my understanding, and maybe Stephen correct me if I'm wrong, but more so just authorization to go to the US rather than the insurance portion. Um, because back in during COVID, um, one of the things is that where a big confusion was is that uh, you could have the option to buy the travel medical insurance through BC Soccer, but since uh, March 2020, uh, that has been removed, um, so it no longer applies. Um, so travel medical insurance is uh, the responsibility of your club and your team, um, but the liability insurance is completely different. If you want liability insurance to extend to the U.S., and let's say you need a certificate, that's not going to be automatically pumped out to you. You have to go through that uh, application process. And just to add to the, um, yeah, the, the purpose of the travel application is to sanction the activity. There you go. So many, many of the um, organizations, the tournaments have the requirement that it's you're a sanctioned um, club in BC soccer and with, through Canada soccer. So that's, that's the reason for the application. There you go. Perfect. And so Sarah has her hand up probably in response to the question. So we'll go to Sarah yeah. here. Thanks, Soleil. Um, I do think like the understanding of clubs is that that travel application was for an extension of insurance. So, and I don't know if like what you just mentioned, Cameron, as of March 2022, that was removed is that what you said no it's um so from what Stephen was mentioning is that that is more of a sanctioning form through bc soccer and canada soccer so to give you approval for that right for that travel but from okay. my understanding is that in the past and i say you know past because we've been dealing with the portfolio for a long time that could have included travel medical insurance but travel medical insurance is not the same as commercial general liability insurance. So the, the exposure here is the liability insurance rather than let's say your own um, medical insurance per se. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that members do not understand that or teams that are traveling or clubs to the US or out of, so in Canada we're okay, but to the US or overseas, that we would need to buy individual insurance policies for the teams outside. I get the personal medical and we all tell mm -hmm. families to ensure they're covered mm -hmm. in terms of through extended medical or mm -hmm. to buy um, medical when they're going across. But in terms of liability, traveling with a team, that's a that's something I've never even realized or thought about and something that probably needs to be brought to the attention of the membership and how to do it. 100% Steve. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah, the, the, the notification about the removal of the travel actually was in 2020 and we did communicate that out. And yes, I agree with you. We should be better at communicating. Farida often does remind people when they're making the application that that they should make sure they're covered, but and yeah. Also, too, and see, I'll add to this or build on this. It's not that every destination that you go or venue or country that they ask for proof of insurance. So it's more so the club discretion, and we can't make that decision for each club, you know, on this call or amongst all of BC Soccer. So let's say you go through that travel application on the website and you get it sanctioned. 
but whether your club believes that there is a liability exposure by participating in XYZ tournament, that is for your club to decide whether commercial general liability insurance is required. Now, if you go to like, let's say a tournament in let's say Washington state and they ask for proof of insurance, then that's when it will probably be prompted for you to be like, okay, well, how do I go through this? And so we we can communicate that process as long as that's being required or asked of you because you will actually be asked from the venue themselves or from the tournament hosts for proof of commercial general liability insurance. Because you are a member club in Canada, um, you know, we have to make sure we coordinate and make sure that the venue in that sp specific state that the insurance policy abides by their requirements for certain aspects. So, for example, in Washington State, if they say they want a 10 million abuse, that's not going to happen. Um, so is there a middle ground there? Um, now, from what I've seen from other sports across Canada and some PSOs here, is that most of the time, and I say most of the time, there might be an option through the venue to buy insurance, depending on the type of sport. Um, so even though you submit requests, you don't have to get it. We're not saying you, we're forcing you to extend the liability to that, to that state or to another country. It's just an option. But to, let's say, think that your liability insurance is gonna extend automatically is probably, you know, not to sound rude, the wrong train of thought. Like, can I just add one more question to that then? Sure. So, or I guess two parts to it. Can a club purchase an extension of general and liability to the U.S. or does they have to be to individual states? And then number two, if you can't and individuals have to purchase it, what could you give me an estimated cost of what it would cost for a team when they're traveling? Yeah, so um, it's not like per state, so so it's more like per trip. Uh, and if you have multiple trips or you know, like you have a forecast of, let's say, I don't know, five tournaments uh, in the US. And as long as all those like tournaments are sanctioned by BC Soccer through their, their travel form online and you've been provided sanctioning or approval, uh, and then BC Soccer, let's say, permits the liability insurance, because it is a group policy, to keep in mind to extend to those five tournaments then we can ask the insurance company for like let's say some sort of group group discount so to speak and so per trip it averages about three hundred dollars i would say from from other sports that i've seen per trip um so if you do like five it could be you know a thousand dollars it just depends on the situation and there is actually a form we have as well that's been distributed since 2016. it's just we've updated obviously a little bit for some of the questions have been updated um so that that form has been around since i started at sbc insurance so it, it's nothing new and one thing to communicate communicate about this cgl to the usa as well is that it's not new it's just that after COVID, we saw an influx of sports going down to the U.S. because really nothing was open in Canada or anywhere else across the world. But the U.S. was a little bit, let's say, depending on the state, quicker to make, let's say, or give field availability. Or sports started to evolve or your club started to try to find alternatives to playing your sport in your local community and rather do it in another country. Um, so where a lot of these questions or let's say awareness began and the insurance policy didn't really change a whole lot is because of COVID. And I don't wanna blame COVID, but we saw more of that, we saw sports evolve to this um, more after it. Oh, just if I'm clear, worst case scenario, we don't buy this coverage, a team goes down, there's a slide tackle, one of our players breaks someone's leg or worse, and they're personally sued. Like that's mm -hmm. the worst case scenario. Yeah. One of and the yeah. worst case scenarios. Yes, so we're leaving correct. that liability onto the individual players correct. In, so, in those correct. situations. Correct. In this scenario that you explained, correct.
And then I believe you touched on this a little bit, um, but Sam had asked, what is the application process and timelines for teams traveling to the US? I know you talked a little bit about the process, but maybe the timeline if you could touch on. Yeah, so nothing right now is like instant. And I just want to say it not in a rude way, but there is an expectation that if you send it a day before that we would send it back to you right away. Um, we have to go through that process as well. I would say two weeks at the most, you know, leeway. Um, just not the day before or two days before your trip. Just because once we get, as long as the form is filled out correctly as well, and we go through that process, um, and the underwriter has the information that they need, then we can quote it properly. So if you plan to do, let's say, five trips or six trips, and you need the CGL to extend to your club for those five trips, um, then send them all at once. Get that form filled out, send it all at once, and then it would just save on the, let's say, the administrative portion for you to go back and forth five separate times. Um, so turn around. It could be about three to four days as long as everything kind of goes smoothly, but to submit it, you know, in advance as possible, a month, two weeks, three weeks is probably your best bet. All right, are there any more questions from folks? I know there's been some feedback in the chat and thank you for that, everyone. Um, BC Soccer will work internally to make sure there's more co clear communication about the insurance um, for the member clubs who are traveling, especially because that seems to be the piece of confusion. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really good that we are hosting this webinar. Um, if there's any more questions, just raise your hand, unmute or write it in the chat here. Doesn't seem like there is. Excellent. Wow, right on the dot one hour. Excellent. So yeah, so I, I also want to make this available. If anyone on this chat wants to take a conversation like offline, I'm happy to do so um, by appointment. Um, so we're, we're OK with that. Um, just just keep in mind, we do service uh, quite a lot of members, so uh, we'll try our best to get back to you and we do pride ourselves on service. So, um, you know, let you know, give us some time and we'll definitely uh, be able to answer your questions or your concerns as well. OK. Thank you, Cameron, and thank you everybody for coming. Um, I will distribute the slide deck out. Uh, hopefully this afternoon, and I will include um, Cameron's email on there as well to answer your question there, Sarah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Soleil. Yeah.